So very good afternoon, all present here. So we are moving on to the final session of the phase two STDP. Uh, before going into the session, I will remind we have uh, our validity function at three thirty, and we have two guest of honor. And followed by that, we'll be having your uh, valid feedback from the participants. So kindly uh, attend the validity function and then give your active positive feedback. So without much delay, let me invite uh, Nibin sir for introducing the speaker. Okay, good afternoon all. Uh, today the third and final session is on the topic IoT protocol demos application development and is handled by Dr. Sri Ram K. Vasudevan. He is currently the principal of K. Ramakrishnan College of Technology, Trichy, and he is selected as a member of Intel IoT Advisory Board and is the winner of Harvard University Hack Harvard Global 2019, World Hack 2019. He is selected as Intel IoT Innovator and inducted into Intel Software Innovator Group and is awarded Top Innovator Award 2018 Top Innovator at Innovator Summit 2019. He has his name in the Limca Group World Records of National Records 2015. He has entry in Indian Book of Records, National Record and Appreciation 2017. He's a reviewer in journals, reputed journals published by Elsevier, Whaley, Interscience, etc. He has 122 reputed journals, 28 conferences and 45 books to his name. And his interested areas include performance engineering, embedded systems, Internet of Things, augmented reality, virtual reality. So with due respect, I welcome Dr. Sriram K. Vasudevan for handling the session. So uh, thank, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Anuyeshar, for another uh, opportunity to uh, talk amidst uh, fellow, fellow colleagues. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I know Saturday afternoon, you must have had good lunch. And the session is exactly by the time where you will tend to sleep. So I believe that I won't invoke that sleep so easily. I'll make it a tough fight for you to uh, decide if you're going to sleep or not. It's, it's going to be literally tough fight because I'll see if I can get you some real interesting content for that. So we are going to go with uh, uh, the practical protocols and the approaches with the protocols that you are going to follow. And that's the uh, decision that we have uh, taken towards the agenda for the day. I'm going to talk about a couple of very interesting protocols. You must have already heard of it. I'm sure you must have heard of it. But it is important for you to see how do we realize that protocol as a product. I'm, I'm good in making products and that's my uh, strength. So I'm going to take you through the strength that uh, uh, connects to the protocols as well. So you'll see that uh, step by step. The first thing that I want to tell you is what exactly is the most important protocol in the entire IoT stretch and where exactly uh, the protocols are being really used. The first protocol that I would like to be very careful about or very uh, uh, curious about is the protocol called as uh, messaging protocols, which, which, is, which is called as AMQP and MQTT. Uh, why is it needed? What is it, sir? Very simple. Let me tell you the complete flow first. You are going to collect data from the sensors. The data will go to microcontroller after filtering, after processing, or before processing, wherever you do the processing, be it in cloud, or be it in the um, uh, local edge, uh, what do you do? You will have to send the data appropriately to cloud, or you will have to send the data locally for the storage. How do you do that? You need to send the data properly. For an instance, I type in the chat box saying, I love India, I love India, I love India, for 10 times, and then I say, I, I like India more than anything else, I like India more than anything else likewise. If I am sending data in the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it should come in the same order 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the recipient and it cannot be different. The point is, if it goes different, it could as well convey wrong meaning. So we need to make sure that we are collecting data properly and we are sending the data for further processing or for storage in the same order properly. If we miss the order, it could as well damage the predictions. So if I receive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it can be only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it can never be 3, 2, 4, 1, 5. It's not possible. So for that to be ensured, we have got some protocols like AMQP or MQTT. They are called messaging protocols, and they ensure that the data is taken care of properly, and they are being pushed properly onto the server or onto the storage medium for further work and further processing. 
that's exactly what is the importance of this messaging protocol remember it so very simple yet a very important point to be remembered and second very important thing that we need to understand is this data protocols are not so very difficult to implement and they are mostly freewares you can go ahead and take it as open source this is all mostly open source so you will not have any trouble in handling all of them that's another thing that i wanted to tell you this is all very easy and most importantly they are open source also so you are you can be an un uninvited guest to use all those so please use all these protocols and if you are doing phd in my opinion you should go ahead and explore all these kind of protocols which are really really useful so what are you going to do today sir i am going to show you a simple demo of how do we use mqtt to detect intrusion in my room i have got an mqtt based sensor detection system which will let me know if somebody has intruded my room i have got a, a sensor room here i have got a sensor covered room here for an instance i have a lot of equipment at my home so i do not want my children to touch the equipment because okay? they could be powered at times and they could disturb the setup so we can use this kind of setup for avoiding those kind of situations where the children could as well damage it and they could get hurt so before i go into it before i go into the demo i would like to tell you something more this mqtt is very friendly to you already you all know it sir how do i know it sir very simple if you have a tata sky connection at home you can tell that you know mqtt how sir very simple it is all about subscription that you go with tata sky you subscribe for a channel and you get the channel what does tata sky do they publish all the channel contents in the air and whatever you have subscribed alone come to it come to you that's exactly what mqtt does mqtt permits you to publish all the data what you have and whomever is the subscriber whomever wants the data they can take the data only that they are interested in so it's going to be very simple so you publish a lot of data and you take the data whichever you want on the other side but only difference between the tata sky and this is tata sky what you can do is you can only receive as a receiver you can only subscribe and then you can see only the content but here in mqtt it gives you freedom and flexibility that you can publish and you can receive simultaneously as well it's it's very easy so understand the point we can publish and subscribe using the mqtt protocol the mqtt is message queue telemetry transport i am sending the messages in a proper queued fashion for telemetry which is nothing but remote monitoring which is getting transported that's what this protocol is all about message queue telemetry transport you are getting data from temperature sensor you are getting data from pressure sensor you are getting data from humidity sensor i collect all these three data i'll put an appropriate title i'll send the data one after another it goes into the system and our mqtt protocol will have proper analysis whoever comes and seeks the data for humidity they will get the humidity title data alone whomever comes and takes the data for temperature they will get the temperature data alone likewise the broker will sit inside and the mqtt broker will transfer the data that's all if i am the publisher i can also be a subscriber if you are a subscriber you can also be a publisher sir what do you say sir very simple mqtt is easy to use i can publish and subscribe data that data whatever you want only will be received by you whatever you have subscribed for only that channel will come to you for example if you have subscribed for only asia net you will get only asia net if you have subscribed only for sun tv you will get only sun tv likewise if you are getting only the data if you want to get the data only for temperature you will get only that and that is done through the title each feed each data will be having a proper title and we can track that with that with that simple introduction that is sufficient for you to understand what it is with the simple introduction what i'm going to show you is i'm going to show you mqtt based pir sensor intrusion detection system we have built a system as i told you at my home and i can show you the demo of it it is out and out out and out based on mqtt and it is sir, very, sir? are you sharing anything or just no, no, speak I, i am just speaking i'll share okay, it in fine, two fine. minutes fine yeah so once once the uh, system is uh, up and running it will start detecting the people who are entering my house entering my uh, room and it will alert me properly it's all very easy and very simple for anybody to understand this can be given as final year mini projects to the student so i would request you people to think about uh, this kind of aspects also instead of the students buying projects from somewhere they can do these kind of simple projects as mini projects and that would be really helpful for them as well this is my humble opinion and i hope you understand that 
let's go ahead by seeing the complete demo of how do we build a simple yet an effective intrusion detection system with PAR sensors and MQTT. It's all very easy and it's very simple. As I told you, all this can be built in no time. That's very easy. We are going to detect the presence or intrusion of any human or animal into a specific area. For an instance, we have a room which we want to monitor for any movement of human or animal into it. We are staying at a remote place and we want to see if anybody enters our room that we are trying to monitor. We are here with a solution for it and our product will help you in tracking the presence of human or any animal and the movement will be updated to you through the cloud. We are using Adafruit Cloud which will get the data clearly updated about any movement which is detected inside. Also, to understand the entire process, we have got a simple LED indicator which will be on to indicate you any movement inside. It will be off if there is no movement detected. The entire process is completed with a node MCU, a PAR sensor and a simple LED. We are using Adafruit Cloud for the data to be updated and it can be monitored from any remote location. Let's go ahead with understanding how the experimental setup and things are done. You can see that the PAR sensor is interfaced with node MCU and an LED is also interfaced with node MCU. The PAR sensor is presented in front of you and the LED is going to let you know if there is a movement through burning. The LED will glow if there is a movement detected. It will be off if there is no movement detected. The PAR sensor is presented in front of you which has got a white color cover which is called as Fresnel lens. That is very helpful to get the focus onto the sensor which is present inside the Fresnel lens. The Fresnel lens is removed right now and you could see that there is a sensor unit there and that is called as pyroelectric sensor. The py pyroelectric sensor is very helpful in detection of the movement of animal or any human and it detects the heat. When we walk into a room there is obviously heat and that is what is detected using this pyroelectric sensor and Fresnel lens is helpful in focusing that completely onto the pyroelectric sensor. The Fresnel lens is so important and it has to be remembered. We have got three pins in this PAR sensor and they are VCC, out and ground. They are to be connected to the node MCU and similarly LED is to be connected to node MCU also. We are covering it back. We are keeping it back in the same position and we are going to go with the process of analysis. Now understand one more thing, we have got something more to be understood. We have got three pins here and two other potentiometers here for us to understand. The potentiometers will be helpful in adjusting the time delay as well as sensitivity. You can tune it for adjusting the sensitivity and time delay. Now you can see that there are three pins available. I have removed the jumper from there and these three pins also play a vital role. When one and two pins are covered with the jumper, it will work on single trigger mode and when two and three are covered, it will work on repeated trigger mode. This is very important to be understood and the jumpers are going to be helpful in selecting the single trigger or repeated trigger mode and that is very important to be understood as I said. That is it. We need to now go ahead with the interfacing done and then we are going to upload the data into the cloud through running our code. It's very simple process. Open any browser of your choice. Adafruit.io has to be typed in the Google and the first link is your Adafruit link. Click on that. Now it is the first time for you to log in. In that case you need to get started for free which means you need to register. If you already have an account you can register with sign in option. Now I am going to register for the first time and let me give my name over there Anudeep Juluru and the email address has to be given. Please give a valid email address so that the entire process can be smooth. My mail ID has been given and select an username which has to be given to you and most importantly this username must be available for you to be provided with it. If the username is not available it will alert you and you will have to choose a different username. And select a password of your choice and once the password is selected you can click create account. If you already have an Adafruit account the process is very simple. Go ahead sign in with your username and the password. Now create account has to be clicked. Once it is all done the world of usage is very very simple. You can see that you have successfully created an account message is flashed over there and the next thing to be done is to select the time zone. Yes, it's very important too. The time zone is to be selected and do not touch anything else. The rest of them let it go default. And I am from India so I need to select the Indian time zone. As you can see I am searching for it and once selected 
that's all the time zone is all done i'm selecting gmt plus 530 kolkata and that is it save settings is done and the process is over now we need to confirm the password for us to continue we have selected the password already we are confirming it right now for us to use the complete facilities of adafruit account is updated completely and we are all set to use the adafruit cloud right now it's very easy to use and very interesting to use as well you can sign out by the sign out option and we are going to re-sign in again so that we will see how smooth it is you can see that i'm going to type my username and the password and once it is done the usage is going to be explained to you in terms of the data and the feed i am logging in with the username instead of email you can also go with email as a login option i am signing in once you are done that's it you are taken into the cloud this is the cloud dashboard that you are seeing and this is very important for you to understand and the profile will be showing you what is your status i mean are you using a free account or a paid account we have 10 feeds allowed we can have five dashboards the rate is 30 per minute we have not used anything so it is zero per minute showing and the storage will be retained for 30 days all these are the status for the free account we have not gone for the paid version and when you go for paid version this will be definitely a better option you will get more facilities and more storage and more number of feeds as well when you go for paid version and here since we are going for free version we get only limited facilities available but that is enough for learning next one is feed this feed is very important and as of now we do not have any feed we need to create when you click view all as i did there will be only default feed and nothing will be available because we have not created any feed now when you click actions you can create new feed and when you click the new feed you'll be able to name it and you can give a description i am creating a feed as par hyphen data and i can give an optional description here you can even ignore it feed for storing the par data i am saving it and that's all we have now created a feed the feed is created less than a minute ago and you could see that there is no data available right now and record zero through zero of zero is present here because we have not got any data into the cloud right now now i clicked adopt root io key which is very important and you can see that there is a key available which we need to use we are using arduino board so select and copy the io username and io underscore key which is highlighted right now and you need to use that in the code let us go to the code and replace these highlighted lines with the one that is copied from the adopt root site now we need to update the name of our Wi-Fi connection and Wi-Fi password appropriately for us to get the compilation and data upload done into the cloud. Now we need to see if ports are all properly selected, the board is properly selected, everything is properly to be done for us to complete the process. Now I am compiling and uploading. The process may take a little while but once it is done it's going to be very easy for us to complete the task. Now we can see that the uploading process happens and it may take few seconds to maximum a minute for us to complete this entire process this is very easy and at the same time very important to follow the steps if you miss any of these steps probably it could fail now it is 90 percent 100 percent is done that's all now you can see that the moment is going to be detected first the serial monitor is opened and the connections are confirmed you can see that the ip address is presented to you it is connected to mqtt uploading par data has come no moment is detected right now and light in the room is in off state and that's what is presented to you in front of you and the same data goes on to adafruit as well which we will reveal a little later now we are going to have some moment inside i'm going to move my hand very close to the par sensor so that it detects the moment you can see that the led has immediately glowed and it shows that there is a moment detected and message is also properly updated now i'm moving out of it and the moment is not detected message has come when the moment is detected the message moment detected has come and the led was glowing when the moment is not detected the led is off and no moment detected message has come we can adjust this time frame also as in how much time has to be the threshold for the led to glow now we are getting into the par data inside that you could see that the entire data whatever we have received in the serial monitor is available 
the movement detected message along with no movement detected message is all highlighted and stacked one after another appropriately with time frame and this can be watched by anybody from remote so this is how somebody can understand if there is any intrusion into the place which they wanted to monitor this is a very simple at a very efficient system for somebody to track the movement I hope you can understand how exactly we could build a system with such a simple protocol and such a simple setup. Uh, was it easy to understand? Was it interesting? This is how you need to really start building IoT products. We have used the same protocol for building enormous number of products where this has become a very important component for us to stretch further. For us to ensure that the data is all safe, we need to definitely go with it. Now, there is one other thing that I would like to tell you. Uh, instead of Ada fruit, sir, I don't like Ada fruit, sir. Ada fruit is getting paid, and most of the times Ada fruit is also slowing down after about seven or eight minutes of data if you are using the free version of it. So what do I do, sir? You can go with something called as ThingSpeak, which is better. And I have done the coding, and I am going to explain you the same with ThingSpeak as well. It's from MATLAB. I mean the MathWorks company. So you can see how exactly it works as well and you can decide to go on whatever is comfortable for you. All these are very easy, and I'm telling you, I can even share the code with you guys if you want. I have that already with me in my uh, Git, so you can take up the Git link and you can start working, so it's no difficult. So I'll just show you the way things work with ThingSpeak also, so that you can now choose between which one is better. Can I go with ThingSpeak or can I stay with Adafruit? Or should I go with something like Azure or something like AWS? They could be a little complex and at times they are also expensive. So what do we do is we prefer to stay with these versions which are free. At the same time, they are easy to handle. So let's understand how exactly ThingSpeak could be helpful for you to collect data real time without much complications. I have shown you a lot of data collection happening there. And I have also shown you how it goes to cloud. Now what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the same thing but in a different cloud in a very simple way of coding. I hope you will definitely like it and understand how exactly things work. Hello friends, welcome back. In this session, we will understand how exactly to interface some sensor to Node MCU or Arduino or any microcontroller for that matter and then to push the data onto the ThingSpeak. ThingSpeak is one of the cloud services like Adafruit, like a Firebase, but this is very friendly as well like Adafruit. I, I prefer Adafruit for all my code and now when I started learning ThingSpeak, I see no difference between Adafruit and ThingSpeak and both are almost similar. I'll tell you how exactly to go ahead and use ThingSpeak. The best thing about ThingSpeak is the visualization and the presentation of your obtained data because this is done by the stalwarts MATLAB. And you can also collect data in the cloud with advanced data analysis facilities which is available with MATLAB for which you may need license. And this is all very easy and simple to use. The first step is to go ahead is to use first to register yourself in the ThingSpeak. Let me complete it uh, stage by stage. Like the first step is to go ahead and get an account created in the ThingSpeak website. The website is thingspeak.com. The moment you go there, you can see that get started for free. Click it. It will give you a detailed uh, description about what is what and all those things are there where they say that it is very easy to use and all these things. There in this space, you need to give your email ID like whatever I'm giving right now, you can give one. And once it is done, you will get an email uh, saying that your account is created and you will have to create a password like every other service create a password and with that the work is done the next time when you come in you will have to log in with that username and the password email is not required for the second time just log in with the username and the password now i have done that already and you can see that here i have logged in my name is sriram osdevan and i have logged in already you can see that the moment you log in you will get account type as license free account and messages we have got available as you can see that we have got a limit of four channels and I have already created a channel for a demo purpose and uh, you can get email alerts. Everything is possible here and this is pretty easy. Here we call it as channels. In Adafruit, you call it as feed and here we call it as channel. I have created a channel here called as Sriram underscore test. Remember, Sriram underscore test is the name of my channel and you can create new channels by clicking new channel. Sriram underscore new underscore channel description test data and you can give as many fields as you want i want only one field label and uh, save channel the moment you click save channel that's all it's all created and you can see that 
Now, when you go back to channels, you can see when you click my channels, you will get both the channels available here. Now, please understand the point. You need to specify in which channel are you going to send the data in. I have collected data from of the potentiometer sensor and I am pushing it onto the ThinkSpeak. I am interfacing them with things, I mean interfacing them with Node MCU and I push the data onto ThinkSpeak. But where I get the data, which channel do I need to get the data? For an instance, I prefer Sriram underscore test and for that I need to click the API key. Uh, just like the uh, keys available for uh, Adafruit, you have got the keys available for uh, uh, this one also, ThinkSpeak also. And we can write into the channel with the right API key and you can read from the channel with the read API key. And you can copy this. This is the key that you need to copy and use it for your code. Remember, this is the key that you need to copy and keep it safe in your code. And if you want, if you feel that it is compromised or something, you can generate a new key by clicking new API key generation. That's it. They have also given you clear idea as in how do you go with the API request for writing a channel feed, reading a channel feed. All these are clearly presented and it's pretty easy for you. For now, you just understand that this key is like a password for you to use this particular channel. The channel is nothing but where your feed is going to go. That's all. The page where we have uh, got things is explained. Now I'll go back to the my channel page and I'm clicking it. Just let's leave it there. I'm going to do nothing. You can see that the data is all coming. I'll explain you how the data is coming and I'll start showing you clearly what exactly is the status of it. Now we need to go to the code and it's time for us to understand the code. Let me open the code with a notepad plus plus because it is easy for me to access as well as to explain you. Let me go step by step. Now remember, these three are the fundamental include files that we need. ESP8266 Wi-Fi.h, Wi-Fi Client.h and ESP8266 Web Server.h. Now, I need to have my Wi-Fi uh, credentials shared here. SSID is nothing but the username and password has to be given and that's it. You need to save the settings here and this is going to be helpful for us. Now, what is the website? What is the cloud service? What is the website address that we are going to go to store the data? Very simple. This is nothing but the api.thingspeak.com. This is where we need to go. This is where our data is stored. So specify it there very clearly. And now see that this is the API key that I want. This is the API key for writing the data in. Let me go back here. You can see that I have got API key here. The API key ends with MK. And I'm going to use the same MK key here for me to write the data into this particular channel. Remember it, I'm going to write the data into this channel. That's also very simple. Now, as usual, any Arduino based code will have setup and loop. And in setup, we go with setup where a minimum delay of 1000 milliseconds is given. And I have set the baud rate as 115200. That's it. It's very simple. And here, I use the Wi Fi mode as Wi Fi underscore STA. STA mode will allow the ESP8266 to connect to the Wi-Fi network. I mean, our wireless router at home or office or wherever, right? It helps me in connecting it. Now, I need to begin the connection. So for that, I have the method Wi-Fi.begin. I have the SSID and the password, which are already given here. SSID and password are here. This is helping me to connect into my Wi-Fi network. So I'm just printing some quotations for me to feel that it is getting connected. And once it is connected, I am all done. But we are going to wait for a definite period of time until the connection is established. If not, I need to get a failure message. So I wait until this particular time where this is the piece of code that will en enable me to help in waiting. I will wait until the connection is made and I have got a delay of 500 milliseconds out here. Now, if the connection is all successful, I need to print uh, in the serial monitor. This will be done in the serial monitor. I am printing double quote connected to SSID will be my username and the IP address allocator will be printed. And this part is going to be very simple where I set my baud rate, I set my connections, I gave my connection establishment between the uh, device and the Wi-Fi and that's it. I check the connection and if it is all done, you will get it printed nicely on the screen. This is regular, traditional. There is no rocket stuff there. It's very simple. Let's get into the main code where we have the loop. I'm creating an instance of Wi-Fi client just like what I did for my Adafruit code. So I'm creating an instance of the class Wi-Fi client and I'm going to use this client everywhere, right? Now, I use the HTTP port 80. This is very standard and this has to be used everywhere. The port number is 80. Now, what is the next step? It's very simple. I'm going to connect to the website and that's very easy. The website is nothing but the, uh, the place where we are going to push our data in. So we are connecting to it. Now, these are all the arguments that I'm passing. 
what is it you can see that i'm connecting it and if it is not connected i get a message as connection failed now once the connection is all done i need to start receiving the data i have connected the potentiometer sensor and the potentiometer is going to be read by analog read command and the analog read is saved into an integer adc value and this will be read continuously i'm going to read the data continuously from the potentiometer sensor and now what do we do we need to get in into that particular channel so for that i use this get method where i use my api key properly for me to log in into that particular channel and only then i can feed this is like you getting into it and then what i do very simple i collect the data real time through analog read i know which channel do i need to go through the api key i use get for it and then i push the data onto it and that's all now what do we do we need the time out also to be specified and we can wait for 5 seconds or 10 seconds something like that so the time out is specified here and this is the piece of code which will help you in reading in setting up the time out now we need to read the data we are going to read the data and further we are using the a read string and we are reading the data from the cloud that's it very simple and time out is also specified here as usual now if the data is not coming we are going to have a delay of say 5000 milliseconds and we will pop out now the most important point that you need to remember here is give your username and the password know what is your api key set up the content where you will connect your uh, wifi to your node mcu establish the connection and display the content for verification in the serial monitor and then go ahead with the loop where you need to set up the port number http port and we have got the uh, ids clearly available here you can see that this is the host address that we are going to use api.thingspeak.com that's being used here host on the http port we are connecting it once the connection is all done we will receive the data and we will post it onto the appropriate channel through the api key reference and you are going to display that that's it it's very simple can we see the demo real time i have coded it clearly here the same code whatever i have had here i'm pasting it up here let me upload it i am switching on my uh, boards which i'll probably upload as a photo in the um, thumbnail part so you can see that the uploading is happening once the uploading is all done you can see the real time feed of the data into the thingspeak cloud real time as well as you would be uh, getting the data displayed in the uh, serial monitor uh, through the simple uh, operations that we are going to do you can see that it takes a little bit of time it takes about 1 minute for me to upload the uh, piece of code that we have written that's it uploading is all done now let me go here let me go to channels my channel and uh, let me click this this is the one that we are using and you can see that the data is all coming this is the previous data here it was switched off i didn't switch it on now i have switched it on and you can see that the first feed is coming now i am going to change it and once in every few seconds probably you could see the data once you click that expand button you will get the data you can see that it's 6 not 2 now earlier it was 295 you can see that i'm going to vary it as well and the visualization is what i'm very happy about uh, things speak it's very nicely done and pretty easy for us to use we can see that here all these things are updated in real time and it's pretty easy for us let me show you it takes a bit of time for the uh, real time response so maybe if you want a perfect real time response you, you will have to go with the paid version or something like that you can see that the data has come down right now and it came from 6.02 to 2 it's all real time and the most important point here is you can add a lot of visualizations when you go ahead with uh, the commercial use or commercial license version you can get that and the data is continuously coming and it is seamlessly uh, presented out here you can add widgets you can export the data all these are possible you can go with uh, the gauge type of display you can go with the uh, this one is going to be tried right now this can also be done so see that here so you will you will get all these kind of displays here this is very nice to use and when you go with kind of hackathons or when you go with any kind of presentations instead of uh, showing the data as numbers you can show it to this gadgets and you can show it to the uh, widgets available over here with they are presented you and it's it's a pretty nice thing that uh, we have tried it out today if you have any questions suggestions please go ahead and type it in the comment sections i'll be able to answer you and uh, that's it you can also go with matlab analysis and matlab visualization for that you need to have the matlab uh, license uh, without that i think it would not be possible you can see that here here since the value is restricted between 0 to 100 now it has reached the peak the original value is 615 but i have created it as only 0 to 100 when i created the uh, gauge 
so similarly we can do that i can start adding as as many number of widgets as i want and that's pretty simple and easy for me to use you can see that here it will all be visualized that's it. it's very simple i hope you uh, understood the code i hope you understood the way we can use it and that's it any questions please ask me in the comment section uh, i'll be more than happy to answer right <clears throat> you must have seen the way we have uh, simply used the things speak as well as adafru i have demonstrated both uh, now that we have seen couple of cloud services it is important for us to see some sort of uh, real time examples where the cloud services could be of real use also recently i have built a system which i have not demonstrated to many uh, till now i'm going to show you that and see the way we have built a system which is going to be really very interesting and i'm very hopeful you would definitely allow to see it we have built a low cost smart and fully functional ventilator yes a real low cost smart ventilator is what we have built and i'm going to show you the full fledged demo of the same which you will be able to understand how exactly it works see the way we have uh, miniaturized it see the way we have pictureized it clearly and i think you will definitely appreciate the way it has been done in case you have any questions after this i'll be happy to take it up we can understand and then we can go ahead with the explanation of that as well welcome back in this demo we are going to see how exactly we have constructed a smart ventilator system the system is fully functional and very affordable we have included all the important features and all the vital tracking parameters are also included in this entire setup this setup will help you in static ventilation dynamic ventilation and this has got fail safe mechanism and little more than that the entire setup is fully functional and you are going to see that demo for the same right now yes this is a smart ventilator system that we have built which everybody can afford now the process is very simple the first step is to register the patient in the ventilator system that's what we are doing right now i'm registering a patient by name bharat the moment it is done the world of usage is very simple and easy you could see that immediately a simple and easy to use interface appears in front of you where you would start getting the heart rate and pulse oxygen levels from our setup and you could see that we got a message as connected before the data started peeping in since we have not tested it with any patient as of now you are not seeing any data there the moment i give my data you can see that the heart rate and pulse oximeter will start giving me the data now we could analyze about the hardware setup right now we are using node mcu with esp8266 module for communicating over aws iot core mqtt service with the application arduino nano for intermediary data collection from the sensors and transfer to the node mcu via serial port we are using max 3000 spo2 and heart rate sensor and we have got mpu 6050 three axis accelerometer for tracking the patient's breathing pattern we have got buzzer to give feedback for every detected heartbeat and we are using stepper motors nema 17 stepper motor a4988 stepper motor driver module and two power supplies for stepper motor and uh, for the microcontroller side as well make sure that the connections are all proper if you are trying the same thing now we are going to track the health vitals right now in the same setup i am keeping my finger over the sensor and you can see that we get the beep over it that's from the buzzer uh, at the same time you could see the data coming right in the right hand side in the android app so both can be visualized and heard and this helps in understanding that the data is all fine the moment i take it off you can see that there is a real time reflection in the right hand side in the buzzer noise stopped so this is all very important and very easy to understand as well now we will go with the static ventilation the uh, resuscitation process is a direct reflection of the values that are fed from the android app you can see that i am going to give the values and i am going to move the content from the android app and you can see that the resuscitation will start appropriately this is all done real time and we are able to we are able to definitely get it uh, visualized properly through this setup i would say and i have a start stop button as well now when i change the values out there that's what i said whatever values you are changing in the android app you could see that the immediate reaction changes here in the left hand side setup the resuscitation is completely based on the values that are fed from the android app so this is static you are changing it manually as well so we can also make it dynamic and that's what i'm going to show you a little later but this is static you can see that the variations are all fantastic and it's really real time because when you design a system for medical or healthcare systems it should be really real time 
So that's what we have tried to produce and it's, it's closely accurate. It's very good, in fact, I would say. The next one is dynamic ventilation that I'm going to show you as well, where we are going to learn the patient's respirator pattern by analyzing the value coming from the accelerometer. I'll show you that setup as well. Before that, you can see the complete stretch of how we can vary the values from the lowest end to the highest end for the resuscitation process. It's very nice, isn't it? I hope you liked it. Now, what are we going to go with this dynamic ventilation where the system will start learning the respiratory pattern by analyzing the value coming from the accelerometer which is strapped onto the patient's chest and we can track the diaphragm movements and this system tries to imitate the same on the resuscitation process so that the patient would feel more comfortable as he or she can recover and start trying to breathe at their own degree and proportion. You can see that there. Now, the most important part comes. We have got a fail safe mechanism. And this is this is how we can have a companion over there and the companion is going to be updated completely about what is the status of the ventilator. So you can see that in the right hand side we have got a companion mode where I have added something called as Amrita and it is given a number 2. Now we will start getting the updates about the ventilator which is in use and I need to add all this properly so I am adding companion data here in the left hand side which is the ventilator mode. Now you can see that in the right hand side we will get updates about the status of the usage of the ventilators. You can see that Bharat is active and there is a green color uh, update available. Now I'm going to disconnect the internet for the ventilator side, I mean the left hand side. Once I do that, I got a message immediately in the right hand side. So the ventilator has small function. So this will definitely help doctors as well as the companions who are sitting with them to understand that if things are all okay. Now, when I enable it again, things will be back in normal mode. You can see that it has gone green in color. That's it, I have explained you very clearly I explained you very clearly how exactly our system worked and this is a very simple, very effective system I believe and if you have any comments, suggestions, please go ahead and type it in the comment section. I will be more than happy to answer your questions and if you like, please give it. I hope you have seen the way the system has been designed. It's a very simple system, a very powerful and easy to use system. It's very affordable. The most important point that we need to understand is all these kind of systems that we are building should be affordable otherwise it is of no use right so we need to make sure that the systems that we are building are used by a lot of people now it is time for us to understand one more protocol and the way we can build systems with it yes i'm going to talk about something which is very very interesting which is called ifttt it is if this then that if this happens then that has to happen it's very simple english that they have used as their abbreviation for uh, creating their protocol name and we are able to now connect multiple equipment with this and multiple technologies with this with ease we are going to see such a wonderful demo right now which is easily built and it's, it's all good to go it's, it's pretty easy for somebody to understand the way it has been constructed and you can also build the same kind of system so i have built an ifttt based system which will be very helpful for us in doing tasks and you'll be able to understand how things work with ifttt right now I'm going to show you the demo, the complete fully functional demo. And if you have any feedback, you can let me know after this session or after this particular demo. In this tutorial, you will clearly understand how do we use IFTTT and Google Assistant together to perform voice control for electrical equipment. We can clearly use IFTTT along with Google Assistant with some coding skills to control any electric equipment as we are going to show you in this demo. This is very simple and easy to use and one can follow the entire procedure and they can do it themselves. Let's start the process. Again, I'm repeating it. We are going to use IFTTT, which is called if this then that along with Google Assistant to control any electrical equipment of your choice. Let's go ahead and start doing the process. We need to first find out the link for IFTTT and that's what I'm going to do right now. Take any browser of your choice and go to Google, type IFTTT. Once it is typed, the first link will appear and that's the official IFTTT link. We are going to take it up and we will navigate there quickly. The moment we go there, the usage is all very simple and we can sign in if we already have an account. If not, we need to sign up. Since it is the first time that we are going to do, we may have to sign up. If you are doing it for the second time, you can sign in with your username and the password. Let's click sign up 
and you can sign up with Apple, Google or with Facebook accounts. It's very easy to use and it's very fast as well. I prefer to go with Google and that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm continuing to IFTTT and I need to give permissions for the same. So I'm typing my Gmail ID and I need to give my password for enabling the permissions and the access. This will enable Google and IFTTT to talk to each other without any issues. So this is done and the next step is to go ahead and type the username and password for logging in into IFTTT. The previous one is for the permission and the current one is to get in into IFTTT. So make sure you understand this difference clearly. Now I have typed my password. Now I am getting in. It is very easy and very simple process one needs to follow to get all these implemented. Now you can see that there is something called as applets which is made available in front of you. We do not have any applet created as of now from our side. We have a default applet available in front of you and it is called applet. Now click my applets and you can get all the applets which are available there which you have already created. Click on create applet and you will get this screen in front of you. If this then that. You've got an add button over there that tells you the story. I'm going to click this add button and if this means if you are going to create a trigger, if this trigger is going to happen. So I'm typing Google there and I have chosen Google Assistant. When you get in into Google Assistant, you can see that you've got variety of options. You can say a simple phrase. You can say a simple phrase with a number. Simple phrase with a text ingredient. Both number and text ingredient you can use. We are going to use Google Assistant for the entire process and hence is the explanation. Now I click the first option. I am going to connect. Click connect. And the moment you do that, you will be connected and it might take few seconds for you to get this task accomplished. Let's wait until then. For the first time, normally it takes a little bit of time, but when the next time you do, it is always faster. Now we have chosen the account to be connected. We have already linked it and we are going to click the same account right now. Now it is requesting you to permit and allow all the, uh, all the transactions that we are going to do with the account. Allow is done. Now we are going to say a simple phrase and what do you want to say is the question. Now remember, we are going to say this into our Google Assistant and we will get the process done. Switch on LED is what we want to say. We also have another way to say it, light up LED. And there is third way to say it on LED. And when we say this, the Google Assistant in turn should respond. So switching on LED is what it will say. And the language is English and we have created a trigger. We have created a trigger. The trigger is what if is all about. If this trigger is happening, then something has to happen. Now we have clicked that. Now then what do we do? We need to go to Adafruit and there we are going to update this entry. I mean, when something happens, the data has to go to Adafruit. So let's open Adafruit and click Adafruit Industries, the website www.adafruit.com. Once you click that, it is all easy and we have explained you the usage of Adafruit in previous sessions as well. So we are going to follow the same set of guidelines. The first thing that we need to do is we need to go into IO option there, io.adafruit.com and we need to sign in. We have already given you the procedure for creating the link with Adafruit for logging in. So follow the same procedure and get the username and the password created and sign in now. You need not sign up again and again. We can use the same method. Now we have signed in. It may take few seconds for you to load it. Now we need to go to feeds. We are viewing all the available feeds and PAR data is the only feed available there. This has been used for my previous exercise. Now we are going to create a new feed. The name of the new feed is LED and the description is optional. If you want, you can give, otherwise ignore it. Switching on and off. This is the description that I have given. Switching on and off LED and we have created a feed. Now this is the feed where the data will come when the LED gets switched on and off. Now we have got a feed created. We are getting back to Adafruit. Click on that Adafruit, choose a service option. Send data to Adafruit IO is available there. This action will send data to a feed as we discussed already. Now click connect. 
the moment you click connect it may take few seconds again for you to get connected to the account now you can see that you are connected to your adafruit account but we need to authorize it click authorize once it is authorized that's all the process is all almost done it's very simple and easy to use now you can see that the feeds that are available in our adafruit are var data and led i chose led now what is the data that you want to save every time when there is an action some data has to go to the adafruit and one is the data to be saved now creating action is done now if i say a simple phrase then send data to adafruit io if and then has happened now we need to finish it off and we can choose to receive notification when the applet runs or we can switch it off that's up to you now we are finishing it off if you say switch on led then data will be sent to led feed that's what we have done right now and we are finishing it off it is very easy to use and you can see that it is connected you need to ensure that the entire process is followed properly and click got it and that's it it is connected and we have created an applet and this applet will be helpful for us to say switch on led through our google feed and immediately the data would be sent to adafruit cloud now i am clicking that again i am going to google assistant i am going to simple phrase what do you want to say that's the option that we have in the beginning now we are going to say switch off led we have switched it on now it is duty to switch off also so we are going to switch it off we can also say it as light off led off led is another option and the google assistant will in turn say that switching off led and language is english and don't change it this is a trigger last time we switched it on through the google assistant this time we are going to switch it off select the same adaf route this is the action we are going to get the action done for the trigger let's go to the feed name we already have a feed created and in that feed we can now give the data as you can see zero one for switching on and zero for switching off that's all it is very simple now we need to continue and finish it off you can prefer to receive notifications or not that's up to you now we are finishing it off once finished it is all done we have got the trigger and the respective action created switch off led will send data zero to the feed and you are saying this to google assistant and in turn you get the data in iftdt now you can see that you have got switch on led and switch off led both available as applets now you will get data every time here in this adafruit and you can see that during the demo and make sure you copy the io username and io key properly and replace it in the code this is very important for you to run it make sure you ens you enter the io username and key as mentioned in the adafruit page itself and give the right key for you to run the process smooth also update the username for the wifi and password for the wifi appropriately for you to get connected the code is very simple and it can be understood with ease now make sure that you are selecting the right microcontroller as well as the right com port if it is not selected again we may have some issues over there that's all we can compile it right now and that's what i am doing right now once the compilation is done it can be uploaded and it takes few seconds for you to complete all this process once it is done we can go ahead and start the process you could see that the led is connected to node mcu and we have got google assistant in terms of our android phone we are going to pull out google assistant from the android phone and we are going to use it we can open the serial monitor to parallelly visualize what is happening now i'm going to call the google assistant and i'm going to use the google assistant with the phrase that i have already given in the code let's say what i have recorded already switch on led you can see that the led is on and the data received is also shown in the serial monitor led is switched on the message is available switch off led 
Now you can see that the data received is zero and the LED is switched off. That's it. It's a very simple process and we have demonstrated it. We have used another terminology also. We can call it by another way. So we are going to say as on LED and immediately you have received the data for on LED. So the LED is also on. This is how you can use IFTTT to switch on and off the LED through voice with the help of Google Assistant. I hope what exactly you have uh, you have understood what exactly we have done and it's a very simple system and till now if you have any questions you can probably type it in the chat section and then I'll go to the next part. Uh, do you have any questions till now friends? Any questions till now? So this is only for the LED or for any electrical instruments? For, for anything, for anything. Uh, when LED is working fine, uh, you can understand that it will work fine for anything. LED is for a demo purpose, sir. It was very easy for me to demonstrate with uh, LED. That's the reason we went with LED. No, no other uh, specific reason. Any other questions? Ladies and gentlemen, we can even type the questions if you have uh, any inconveniences in asking it. I'll be happy to uh, look into it and then I'll go to the next one. Nothing. So all these are uh, tried uh, literally using very simple set of equipment as you can see. Uh, we have used mostly Arduino or Node MCU, nothing more than that. They were the simple uh, set of contents that we really used for building up this kind of uh, stuff and it was very simple and easy. Uh, so uh, you need not really go ahead and uh, spend a lot of money for uh, getting these things done. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how exactly you can use voice controlled LED but with Bluetooth option. Right, I'm going to uh, show you how exactly it works. And after that, one final demo uh, for the day would be on uh, another equipment design. All these are very simple and easily uh, designable things. I mean, you need not require a lot of time even to understand how do we build this. This is all very simple and uh, easy to build stuff. Uh, so I'm going to show you one more uh, demo on uh, how do we build IoT-based fire alarm. Uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have built an intrusion detection system in the morning, I mean, in the first session. And I have shown you how exactly to detect the intrusion detection with a PER sensor and I raised an alert as you must have heard of it, as you must have seen that. Now what we have uh, what we have done is we have built a system that's going to be very helpful for you to detect fire alarm. So we'll show that first and then we'll see how exactly your opinion uh, goes on on that. And then we will go ahead with the next one. So all these are very simple. Again, this is all built in-house and tested. They are working fine and the codes are available online as well. I have shared the same in my uh, channel also. Uh, you could see that. If you have any queries later on, probably I can answer them as well. IoT based simple fire alarm is the uh, thing that we are going to discuss right now. It's, it's pretty easy. It's no difficult. Hey friends, welcome back. In this session, we are going to do something really very interesting. We are going to build an IoT based fire alarm. Yes, we'll detect the temperature and smoke and we will get you an alert in case LPG leakage is detected or in case your temperature at the home or office is getting above certain limit. When it crosses threshold, we are going to generate an alarm through the SMS as well as the call. We are going to use a couple of very simple sensors and node MCU and GSM unit and we are accomplishing that task. How do we do it? We are going to show you a demo as well, which is going to be real time and it will be very easy for you to understand. And how do we do it? Very simple, choose the Node MCU, SIM 900A GSM module, MQ135 sensor and LM35 sensor. As you all know, MQ135 sensor is a very important sensor and it is an air quality monitoring sensor and LM35 is a temperature sensor. We are going to use all this and the connection details are presented in a very simple manner for you to understand. You need to connect the node MCU's 3.3 volt to MQ135's VCC and LM35's VCC. 
all the ground should be shorter properly the d5 of node mcu should be shorter or connected to mq135 d0 and a0 analog 0 pin of node mcu should be connected to lm35 is out and d8 to tx of sim 900a gsm module and d7 to rx of sim 900a module and the connection schematic is presented to you we will see the demo right now and i'll explain you how exactly things are done so very simple thing to be done and it's very easy for anybody to do i hope you'll definitely like it right can we get into the hardware demo for it it's very easy and make sure that the connections are all done appropriately as i have shown you in the connection diagram we have got mq135 lm35 and sim 900a gsm module connected with node mcu as i told you already the mq135 sensor is an air quality monitoring sensor which has got a lot of applications and we are going to use it as lpg detector this is how we have connected it and it's a very simple connection as you can see this is the uh, sensors that we have used we have got the lm35 mq135 and node mcu we have not used any higher end microcontrollers node mcu is available there gsm 900a is there sim 900a and let's understand more about this mq135 uh, if you see the sensor this is the one which is going to get us the intimation of the presence of lpg gas turn it upside down you've got a lot more things to note when you turn it upside down you will see a lot of indications over there the first one is the power indication you can see that that indicates the sensor is working fine and it is on that's a power indicator and the next thing is the potentiometer which will help me in tuning towards getting the correct sensitivity we have tuned it already and it's perfectly working right now and there is something more called as d0 led what is it that's the one which is going to be glowing when the presence of lpg is understood when the lpg is available and if it is detected we get this d0 led glowing immediately so we are going to use this facility and we are going to get it done the code is presented in the left hand side go through it at your comfort now i am going to use the lighter cigar lighter and it's going to get the lpg out and we will detect it immediately and there will be a call and a message and in the code make sure that we are updating our mobile number properly with country code appropriately that's what i'm doing right now i'm using at commands for it for the calls as well as the messages we need to do it correct otherwise you won't get the call also you can see that i've got a message as emergency your house is under risk of fire or lpg leakage and that's also printed and that is what you will get when the lpg's leakage is detected make sure you selected the right board and the right com port is updated without which you won't get the output let's go ahead with compilation of it i'm compiling it right now and the compilation is all proper you can see that it's done and then uploading happens it will keep uploading and the uploading won't be complete because we have used the connections that way we have shorted the rx and tx of the gsm to the node mcu and that cannot be done we have connected the rx and tx of you can see that now rx and tx of the gsm module is connected to the node mcu and it will never be uploaded when you have it connected pluck it out try uploading it will all be done and once it is done reconnected this is a very important thing to be done though you have used the software serial library this is to be done and once it is uploaded you can connect it back on the slot now you can see that done uploading message has come and we are connecting it back onto the slot and now it's all right that's all we have done it now can we go ahead and open the serial monitor we will get the temperature sensor reading i'm yet to get into that part of how it works we will talk about it a little later let's take the lighter and i'm going to get the lpg's presence in the environment and i am lighting it and i'm showing it to the sensor now once the presence is detected we will get the d0 led immediately glowing as well as alert will come to us you can see that the d0 led is bright and glowing right now and alert lpg gas is leaking in your house is the message that you have got now i told you that we will get a message and a call the call has come right now in front of you and we will get a message as well we need to wait for a couple of seconds and the message would have come let me cut the call and we will get the message right now it will take maybe 10 15 seconds based on the network connectivity and the speed that you have uh, once yes you got it right now and you can see that emergency your house is in risk so we have detected the presence of lpg now how are we going to use the temperature sensor i am going to try to increase the temperature and the temperature sensor will understand it with the usage of lighter i am going to increase the temperature once the threshold is crossed we will get an alert call message all these things will happen immediately and that's what i am going to do right now stay tuned i am now using the lighter you can see that i'll lamp i'll light it right now the temperature will be increased slowly 
you can see that in the real time the temperature gets increased 32.26 it is it will go on to 40 45 like that okay. because the temperature gets increased and it's very close to the sensor and once the temperature reaches the threshold we will get an alert immediately and that will be reflected in the message as well as the call alert your house is on fire is what we have got and we must be getting a call right now and that's what i'm looking out at and yeah we should be getting it anytime now yes we got a call so what i said is right so this is an emergency call which is raised and i'm cutting the call right now let's see if we have got the message we must have got that as well and maybe 10 seconds 15 seconds we'll get it all these are very simple and we have used 80 commands to achieve this and the interfacing was simple and we got the message emergency your house could be at fire that's all you can try it out at your at your lab but make sure that you are using the lighters properly and make sure that it is not hurting you as well as it is not damaging the system Thank you very much and I hope you liked it. Thank you. All right. So I hope you've got a glimpse of what kind of uh, applications can we build through the available protocols. One final demo, as I told you, uh, is scheduled right now and we will see that the complete voice controlled uh, system. I mean, we are going to control electrical equipment with voice and through Bluetooth. It's a five minute demo that I'm going to show you and this is fully functional and working fine. Uh, once you listen to it, probably we can have a Q and A session quickly and then we can wind it up. I hope I have not bored you till now. And I know sitting in afternoon session is a bit difficult. Most of you, including me, will switch off the video because we never know if we are sleeping. So we need to be very careful about it in the afternoon session. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. So after listening to this uh, particular session, we'll go ahead with uh, Q&A and we can close the session there. Uh, if you have any questions, you can type the questions in the uh, chat box as well. Hello, friends. Welcome back. In this session, we'll clearly understand how to control LED or any electric appliances through voice command. It's very easy. And we are going to demonstrate it with an LED right now. And for that, what you need to have is you need to install Arduino voice control app that is available in Play Store in your mobile. Do that. And this is the app that you need to search for in the Play Store. I have highlighted the name of it as well uh, right now. You can see that Arduino voice control. That's all. You need to use that in your Android phone. The same version is available for iOS as well. And you can install it there. Now, what do we do? We are going to control the LED through voice. I am going to say switch on and the LED will be switched on. I am going to say switch off, the LED will be switched off. And all these are done through voice commands. For that, we need Arduino Uno, we need HC05 Bluetooth module and most importantly, we need the LED. How are the connections to be done? Very simple. We have the HC05 module here. Connect the RX of the HC05 to the TX of Arduino. Connect the TX of the HC05 to RX of the Arduino. That's it. And then you need to go ahead with VCC to properly VCC with the board and then ground to ground to be shorted for the HC05 board. Similarly, I have an LED which is going to serve as an indicator for us and ground of the LED to be properly grounded and here we need to give the supply as well. That's it. It's very simple and I'm going to show you the code right now as well as the demo with which you can understand how exactly we can do it with ease. And this is real simple and I hope you definitely like it. Right. Let's get into the code right away. The code is very simple and we have configured the LED as pin number three, which means we are connecting LED to the pin number three. That's what I have shown you in the diagram sometime back. And we need a string uh, to, uh, to accept the command. The command has to be received, right? Switch on is the command. So it has to be received and we need to have a string for it. And as usual, we need setup and loop. Inside the setup, I have set the baud rate as 9600, where the pin mode LED has been set up as the output pin. And initially, the LED has been set as off. With digital write LED low, we can set it as off and that's what I have done. And when you go into the loop, we are going to read the string and that's done through read string option. And if the command is switch on, then we need to make the LED glow. And if the command is switch off, we need to make the LED go off. Let's go ahead and run it and I'll also show you the demo right now and how exactly it works. The code is very simple as you have seen right now. 
Now let's have the connections like this. The same connection diagram as I have shown you, you need to have it in your uh, board and it's pretty simple. You can see that the HC05 is blinking at a faster rate, intimating that it is not paired with anything. The moment you upload your code and then you start the pairing work, it will pair and the flickering rate will go slow. That is an intimation for you to understand that the pairing has been done. Now there is no pairing done. And what we are going to do now is we are going to go with the upload of this code. Control U is the command for uploading. I mean the shortcut for uploading. Once you can see that it's compiling and uploading symbol comes. But nothing will be uploaded right now because you have connected the RX and the TX pins to the Arduino from the uh, Bluetooth. It won't work that way. So the easiest way to do it is remove the RX and TX before you upload it. And you can see that it will keep waiting for uploading, uploading status only for a longer time. So you remove it right now and try uploading. It will upload and then you connect it back. That's the uh, key that you need to do. And I'm going to remove it right now. I have just removed it and you can see that I'm removing it quickly. And now if I try uploading control U, it will be uploaded within seconds and you could see the result. And it's uploading, done uploading. That's all, it's all done. Now what we can do is we can reconnect the TX and RX. And now we can see our app. We have already installed this app. Just open the app. Arduino voice control is the name of the app open it and the moment you open it you need to enable the bluetooth as well because the entire operation is happening through bluetooth and you can see that it will start searching for the devices nearby and samsung tv is listed and then the next device that i have is going to be listed and uh, once it is listed you can pair with it and that's like a traditional pairing work that we do once you pair it that's all it's all done now my device is listed i'm going to pair it and I need to type the pin 1234 is the pin that I have kept and I am typing it right now. So once it is done, that's all my work is very simple and easy after that. I will get a window where you can see that there is a mic button available. Just But initially the status is disconnected as you can see there. You can see that the status is disconnected. So I need to connect it. Selecting the button will help me in identifying what are all the components available. Click it. It will be connected right now and you can see that the status is connected and now press the voice button. You can press the mic button there and give the command. I'm going to press it right now. Let me press it saying switch on. Switch on. That's all I conveyed it and you can see that the LED is brightly glowing. Now I'm going to give the command switch off. Switch off. That's all. It's off. I hope you liked the session and it was very interesting. You try it out in your machine and it's pretty easy. If you have any questions, please go ahead and type it in the comment section. I'll be able to answer it. Thank you very much for following my channel. The content. If you have uh, any questions, please ask. That's all. I'm done. So it's a um, demo field session, uh, if not fun field at least. So you guys should ask me any question if you have. I'll be more than happy to answer. I've already given you my uh, channel details where you can find all the demos that I have demonstrated to you in a crispy manner. Whatever I have shown you is all from my local drive, so it is a bit long. So if you want a crispy uh, video uh, lectures of all those, you can probably check my channel and you'll be able to get those details. And you can reach me over email if you have any questions uh, with the mail ID that I'm typing just now in the chat box. So you'll be able to uh, get me in. And I hope I did not bore you people. Uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask that. I'll be more than happy to take it up and I can probably hand it over to Shanmayeshar again. Can you say a few words about the course yesterday we have seen in the WhatsApp uh, uh, You want me to say a few words about course? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, which course, sir? Uh, the yesterday one. the WhatsApp status you have put. Oh, words. okay. That's that one. Okay. Wiley, uh, you know, right? Wiley is an international publisher and they are of very high repute. I have authored an uh, international edition uh, IoT book with them two years back. And it has come out in the second edition also. It is selling very well in the market. And in fact, it is the major textbook in uh, Gujarat Technological University for IoT course. Uh, so it, it is doing really very well. And once the book started, I felt that it has to be supported by a video series because IoT is not something that everybody can learn theoretically and survive. It is a practical subject. So I uh, spoke to them and then I asked them, can we make a series of video? And uh, that could also be sold as a educational material in parallel. Then they did a lot of survey and they have got Wiley next. 
they have got wiley nxt which is next generation education material preparation team and they gave me an opportunity to make a complete video series which includes the question and answers study materials videos code certification questions everything uh, right from start to end like what you do in coursera certifications we have ready that in indianized format for everybody in the world and it is got around uh, 30 30 30 lectures in each of this beginners advanced uh, certification series and it's available online you can just go and google it uh, wiley next wiley nxt if you type sriram kewas they will get it so further they have appreciated my contribution and they given me the certificate that i have kept in my whatsapp status like everyone else does so the purpose of certificate nowadays has become not to store it in the file but to keep it in the whatsapp status so i follow it and uh, that's it so it's, it's a predominantly it's a 30 hours core material uh, if you go through the course you can complete it in 30 to 32 hours and if you prepare well you can crack the interview questions in uh, i mean the certification questions in no time that's that's a easy way to do it thank you sir thank you for the information thank you any queries from the participant side uh, i think we need to uh, raise an alarm sound so that they all can wake up if they are sleeping or we need to raise a, a voice note saying that your place has come please get down it will be a very comfortable journey <laughs> during the afternoon time if somebody is singing and uh, i know it's very difficult if you have any questions please go ahead here ask me i will be happy to answer i hope they all made use of it uh, jokes and fun apart right uh, if no questions that's absolutely fine uh, maybe if you have any questions in future please reach me out through shanvi sir you can directly write an email to me i wish to convey my sincere thanks to uh, shanvi sir for giving me this honor and opportunity every time uh, so i look forward to seeing you all in the validatory ceremony 330 right sir yes sir you go and have your tea and then come back sir oh, perfect i'll join by 330 sharp okay sir fine sir thank you sir bye so thank you very much uh, we are not giving any special vote of thanks for you sir so <laughs> you can give it at the end <laughs> yeah i'm not required sir it's not no okay, formality sir. between us thank you okay sir thank you the participants uh, just so five minutes break we will can have the validity function sharp at 3:30 in the meantime i will once again share that uh, exam uh, question um, link so those who are not attempted please uh, attempt it
participants uh, please stay online sharp at 3:30 we can start the validity function and end as early as possible please switch on your video and give your positive feedback or if negative feedback also is there please give your feedback
is a anonymous array. Let me zoom in and let me zoom in again. So just a minute, once the other guest comes, we can start. So I already told if you can uh, switch on your uh, video means it will be good for us to take some of these screenshots. Sir, I joined, sir. Okay, sir. See you. Can have a switch on your video also, it is good for us, sir. <laughs> you are in using mobile, sir? Yeah, yeah, I'm using mobile. I can switch it on. Give me one. Yeah, I'll have to come out of my mother's room. She's actually okay, okay, fine, fine. Yeah. So participants, uh, just a request from the organizing team to switch on your video so that we can have a very good uh, validity session. <coughs> Thank you, thank you. So without much delay, uh, we can move to the function. So on behalf of the Vishishadi family, I welcome each and every one of you present here for the validity function. Hope we had a very good uh, 16 uh, sessions in the phase two. Hope each and every session uh, is, we learn something so that we can utilize for your research or your future works. So without much delay, let me move on to the 
actual function of uh, the valid tree. So for this function, uh, we have two eminent uh, guest of honor. One is uh, Mr. Jomi Jo Salapat, who is currently working as a senior project manager in Infosys Bangalore. Welcome, Jomi. Hey, he thanks, Ramukesh. A good friend of mine. Again, another good friend of mine, a known personality to one and all present here, Dr. Sriram Vasudevan, sir, the principal of uh, K. Ramakrishna College of Technology, Trichy. Welcome you, sir, for the validity function. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, without much delay, I am not going to talk much because you are hearing me for the last uh, 18th session. <laughs> so now it is up to you to tell what are the positives and negatives of this uh, 18th session, what we have conducted. <clears throat> to my knowledge, what I have initially planned is the talk, what I listened from our uh, speaker, that is Sri Ram K. Vasudev in the year uh, 2019 from uh, 19 or 18 from uh, Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College. Like Coimbatore. So that inspired me to have uh, a FDP or short term training program on this particular topic. So from that only I came to this particular level. And with the help of Sir, I could be able to get some of the speakers. And after that, I have myself attended some of IOT sessions. And from there, I have selected few speakers. And then I could be able to uh, accommodate a few of my friends who are working in this particular area. By in that way, I could I have almost uh, ended up with uh, 18 plus 18, 36 speakers. Hope uh, most of the speakers entertained you in all the aspects. So this is what actually how the program came into reality. So now it is up to uh, you to give your uh, feedback, how we organize the uh, STGP and in what way better we can organize in the future. So now, uh, before going to the participant, let me invite our guest of honor. First, I'd like to invite Jomi Jos for uh, the felicitation. Thanks, Anmukesh. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So I believe uh, you had a great time and you know it's all in a learning session, but I would not take much time. I'm really honored and to be part of this function today where you all, you know, enriched and stepping towards a, a focused, a very good, bright future. Why I should say the bright future is that the kind of, uh, I believe the topic that has been selected by Vishwa Jodi College and the team for this STTP really the need of the hour. Why? Because especially during this pandemic COVID situation, the same IoT technology that brings all of us, you and me, all connected here remotely today. What we have seen five years ago and what we have seen today is all extremely different. Hence, be assured that you know the technology would continue to explore and grow more and more vast in the every aspects, where it was actually coined by Sir Kevin Aston in 1999 when he was working in Procter and Gamble during his uh, work there, he has introduced RFID. Since then, we have seen in Alexa from Amazon and a couple of areas like Fitbit, smart watches, and a couple of many areas that are examples actually. So the time is not that far for IoT to be more in our households too, that I'm really strongly believing in. But the efforts need to be made and the decision and the drive for that should come from each one of you to take the next step from this point of view, from this particular training that he got from his HTTP. For that, I strongly believe the HTTP program would enable us the ways to find how we can combat every challenges in this particular way as we see the path to success and to build a greater future with IoT technology. I don't wonder why this mechanical stream has selected this particular IoT. I was actually, uh, I joined a little early to the session actually, even though it was 3.30, but uh, fortunately or unfortunately I joined and I was to be part of uh, the class freedoms that I was taking. And really it was worth, you know, attending for me. 
I was just under the impression that IoT means only for internet based everything in computer area or for information technology field. But the kind of technology that he explained made me think around there is something in the area of mechanical field also. Obviously, in automotive industry and everything, it matters. But that makes me understand, you know, it's a great future. So I would say, as you know, learning never stops and technology never stops. And make sure uh, we, along with the, uh, the Vishu Jyoti team, comes up with a new more and more program such you know, what we had, you know, the one week program you, you guys had, that again, it should come up in different, different manner for different, different areas that will enrich us to pay for a better future. This doesn't stop this with one week, as I said, it should start from you. If you guys are you know, getting trained or something again, you need to drive from your side, how that can be implemented. Let it be in a smaller way, in a smaller way from your side, in anything that you find this can be implemented, you have won the game. So with that, I would stop my speech here because I have uh, limited time given by Sanmugesh and thanks for this. And as I said, I come from Bangalore where it is normally called Silicon City or the IT city. But I understand above and far away than that, this IoT is going to boom and going to you know, encourage all of you and cherish in every areas that we could. So stay safe, take care and wish you all good luck. Thank Thanks, you. Thank, you. Thank you. So let me invite next uh, Dr. Sriram K. Vasudevan sir, for the illustration. So sir, you have to tell in both the aspects uh, as a chief guest and as a resource person how we have uh, arranged this session and episode. So in both the ways, you need to give your feedback, sir. Welcome, sir. Yeah, I, I can. I, I would like to first thank uh, Mr. Jomi. Uh, it's it's very kind to know that you have joined a little early, and uh, I did not bore you. I feel uh, <laughs> because uh, teaching teaching or discussing something with the industry person has to be different. The way that we deal with uh, teachers might not really work out to the industry persons. I'm I'm pretty cautious about it because we have been handling a lot of uh, technical training at industries as well, and I was with uh, Fujitsu as well for quite a long time. So thank you very much for listening, and thank you very much for the compliment that you have given. I am uh, truly honored, sir. And thank you, uh, you Sanvi Ashar. Um, you have been giving me a lot of chances to talk, and it has been my passion to talk. And fortunately, uh, whatever I do talk is clicking. And thanks to uh, the Almighty for providing me that skills to somehow impress people. And whatever I do is becoming something uh, something good enough that can really inspire people as well. That's what I feel. And thankfully, it's all the uh, greatness of uh, Almighty. And coming to the um, sessions on the schedule and the plan that you have made. I am truly uh, amazed by the contents that you have curated towards the session. I mean the suggestions and the titles that you have selected and the appropriate uh, speakers. That's very important, right? The speaker cannot be boring. Uh, to my opinion, uh, you cannot have attention retained from anybody more than seven minutes. If you are having attention span more than seven minutes, then you are a genius. I am, I am, I'm kind of, I am no way into that category where I can retain my attraction for more than seven minutes. I'll have to be brought back. There is a horse in my mind, which always runs out immediately. So I think that aspect, whenever I take a session and I see that most of the speakers would have definitely done that because the topics are so, you have to be really innovative in teaching. You have to be really uh, connected in teaching. And that's what has happened in this entire duration, I believe. And second thing that I want to convey is uh, thanks to Government of India, thanks to AACT, Atal, all these opportunities for running so many e-courses have really motivated us to listen, understand, and to do something useful. Uh, to be very honest, by the time we started the first lecture, when I gave the first online lecture, I was totally demotivated and dejected in fact, because people did not know even how to use Zoom or Google Meet or something, and they kept it on unmuted things. And parents will come and talk in the background. Wife will come and call in the background. A child will come and say, who is this uncle talking? All these things are all heard. Uh, and at times, it was really boring as well because we did not know how to convey things. As a teacher, I learned a lot during this pandemic time as in how do we be really, really be innovative in teaching? How do we include a lot of content which can make children understand better, teachers understand better? So I request 
all the participants here some of you would be really elder than me so don't take it as an advice take it as an input you can overall you can think about changing the way you teach after the pandemic once the college reopens include a lot of practical stuff make it not theoretical make it practical theory is important let's teach theory but let's show them how practical stuff works and if you see all my topics i made a practical video out of it i do not have a professional videographer with me i do not have a professional any software with me whatever i did is with my mobile that i am talking you through right now that's all i do not even edit it it's all one shot video finished i throw it into the software it comes out as a nice video you can try this out and any time any help i am always there to do and there are a lot of people like uh, industry people like uh, people who have spoken now the uh, chief guest who has spoken now can really help us out because they will always be interested in training us and to get us in the next better level because they will get best students there so it's all been win so please try that way and one very sincere and humble request to you people is iot is not a stand alone technology please do not believe that i learn iot and i can be happy please start thinking about machine learning deep learning nlp artificial intelligence as a basket and then iot can be added to that basket so no technology is going to be stand alone now in future there will not be mechanical engineering instead it will be mechanical engineering with artificial intelligence mechanical engineering with robotics specialization so the right stuff is already started mechanical engineering initializing something on iot is something very good so we are going to do more of this and please start learning things and if you need any help i'll be more than happy to provide and i have already given you my email id whatever help whatever suggestions inputs if you need please reach us out i'll be helping you and if i do not know i can connect you to right people thank you very much for the opportunity sir it's very nice talking to all the uh, participants and they have been really cool uh, thank you very much once again thank you sir thank you very much now it is uh, open for the participants participant please kind enough to have your feedback please switch on your video and then uh, give your positive feedback or uh, any feedback or to your participants you can say participants please kumar kumar ask question will be given a chocolate as usual rajeshan sir yeah yeah sweet sir Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, good evening to all. <coughs> Actually, I'm not feeling well, so only I'm having some severe fever. But uh, I feel it was a uh, one of the great, uh, informative, and excellent program which I had attended mm-hmm. on this lockdown period. Uh, it was a very, very, very excellent, and uh, it was very uh, useful for the young researchers. and at the same time i would like to thanks to dr uh, shanmugathan sir and team for organizing in a well planned way so i hope uh, uh, all these types of events will be arranged in future also my all wishes to you and your team sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir rashan sir Yeah, Rajesh Sagar here. Good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, it is my great pleasure in uh, joining you uh, for such a wonderful uh, FDP you have organized. I, uh, I was discussing. I was discussing with my children that the, 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 the topics are very much uh, appropriate to your the industry four point zero or whatever it is IoT. and as somebody pointed out now here uh, iot is not a standalone system it's a blend of uh, different technologies so uh, shamigesh uh, you have chosen uh, a very what do you call uh, updated uh, the need of the our topic and all the topics all the speakers were very uh, intellectual 
many times many times i was uh, many times i was uh, uh, surprising to listen to these speakers and they have keep uh, pouring the no- pouring the knowledge to the, the participants uh, like uh, in the pool of uh, knowledge uh, actually once uh, i remember just a minute uh I remember we were the part of uh, a program where uh, where in, in coimbatore uh, there are there are many topics were introduced but there are only selective speakers who were talking about discussing about this uh, the emerging areas but uh, this fd this fdp uh, they have chosen uh, all the appropriate speakers all the appropriate speakers uh, what these speakers uh, many many speakers maybe only one speaker uh, uh, for what of connectivity um, suited the session otherwise others uh, have got uh, uh, the good connectivity and the good um, knowledge uh, i was very in spite of my other activities uh, i was not feeling well for the past two or not two days but still i was uh, listening to the speakers because the topic was interesting Uh, in addition and the, the the content they delivered also was very much uh, uh, updated updated uh, so uh, i i really happy really happy to uh, say that I, uh, it is very much uh, it is very good that i was part of this utp thank you thank you the, the team of uh, dr samigesh for organizing such a wonderful this thing uh even even he has uh, we, we used to we used to find to difficult to get the speakers from the industries industries maybe one or two uh, is not normal but uh, he has taken uh, many many speakers from industries even the va microsystems exchanger uh, uh, etc etc even the speakers had uh, different uh, uh, versions uh, it was very uh, interesting fruitful uh, fdp I, I thank thank the organizers. I wish you all the best, and I all uh, I wish the organizers uh, for giving us uh, a lot of knowledge to this uh, to this uh, emerging area. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Sarvanesh. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any other feedback from the participants, please? Good afternoon, sir. Myself, Dr. Niranjan. Uh, I just want to share uh, uh, my views over this uh, FTP, over the SPTP, uh, IoT-based uh, manufacturing and design. And first, I would like to express my uh, sincere thanks to the organizers uh, um, for uh, conducting this uh, STTP on the emerging areas in the manufacturing and design, because uh, uh, when uh, have referred the papers, uh, there are uh, still the research is going on this area, application of IoT and application of artificial intelligence and application of uh, uh, machine learning and deep learning, all these uh, uh, topics in the manufacturing and design. so it's i understood the efforts uh, they put for bringing the speakers those who are expertise in this areas especially in the manufacturing and design it's very difficult to bring the speakers uh, so i don't know how the organizers how much effort they put for arranging the speakers for delivering this much Uh, expert, their expertise in these areas uh, of the research persons. Uh, really, I just want to say thanks to the organizers, and also I would like to say the thanks to the resource persons for delivering, for sharing their knowledge uh, for us. And I have seen all those uh, uh, the speakers from IITs and uh, speakers from the industries. uh the delivered their expertise their knowledge uh how to apply these iot 
uh, Internet of Things techniques in the manufacturing and design. And uh, um, finally, the different areas what I learned from this workshop, like uh, the basics in machine learning and uh, basics in uh, big data analytics today in the sessions. Uh, from the today sessions and uh, uh, the robotics, uh, the first day session, and uh, especially the smart manufacturing by Shamu sir. So all those are really a uh, wonderful sessions. And uh, finally, I'm thankful to the speakers and I'm thanking to the organizers. Sir. Thank you, Niranjan sir. Any other feedback, please? Prabharan, sir. Kendran, sir. Sridharan, sir. Okay, no other feedback, I can wind up. Jomi, you can wind up. Yeah, Sanukesh and uh, Vishajyoti College team and all the participants, I'm really thankful for giving such a pleasant evening with you all guys. And I believe I should have been part of the full training from the starting of the session itself. I missed it. It would have given me back to my childhood days or the school days or the college days. And really, Shandukesh sessions would have enabled the people and would help them come up in a, you know, thinking better, better, you know, vast areas from now. So thanks to all of the organizers and thanks for making me part of this program today. Thank you. Thank you, Jovi. Sriram, sir, you can wind up, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity and I wish everyone good luck and stay safe, stay good. Thank you, sir. So, Arun, sir, can I just propose the vote of thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, first of all, I would like to thank uh, today's guest of honor, Mr. Jomi uh, Josalapat, sir, Senior Project Manager in Process Bangalore, for accepting our invitation and spending his valuable time for inspiring us. Uh, and also, Dr. Srirangi Vasudhan, sir, for his endless support and guidance. Actually, he is a standing uh, example how a person should be so simple and humble with such a profile, uh, with immense gratitude. I thank all speakers who handled expert sessions in this HTTP, especially Sri Ram sir for his uh, wonderful session today with the live demos and the exams. Uh, I would like to thank our HOD Dr. Chandra sir for the pain and effort he put for finding 18 speakers for each sessions. 